stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM. Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of All Things Legal. You're very, very happy, aren't you, King? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It has been my pleasure to be discussing um, these various legal issues with you over the past few weeks. Now, um, again, our numbers are 876. Could you remind me of our numbers, please? Because... Uh our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Again, 876-453-1444 or if you are sending in a message from overseas, 954 954- Three three eight seven nine seven three. Now I have a message here from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and it says, "Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus by doing the following: wash your hands frequently with soap and water." And remember that we have been discussing for the last two weeks at least that washing your hands has to be for at least 20 seconds. A good way to measure time is to sing the happy birthday song twice. Another tip, cover your, no- your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it immediately. Tip three, avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. The ministry further says, if you think you have been exposed to COVID-19, stay home. Self-isolate immediately and call 888-1LOVE. That is 888-663-5683. And this is a message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I just want to add for completeness that, you know, in the, in the last two weeks when we invited the two doctors, Dr. Ricketts and um, Dr. Harvey, we were told of, of other steps that we can take to prevent um, uh, COVID-19. Um, and if, in fact, we actually contract it, then um, these steps would also be useful. And these steps include boosting your, your immune systems. You know, um, the Dr. Ricketts told us the first week that we can blend um, our green juices and consume a lot of fruits. Um, consume a lot of water. And then um, Dr. Um, Harvey last week told us certain foods that we could have, um, you know, um, zinc-rich foods such as um, fish and nuts because zinc, she said, is toxic to the coronavirus, um, consuming a lot of fruits and vegetables. So we we, we really want to have a balanced diet. So just in case... um, we contract the virus. We're able to to fight it with with our natural um, with the immune boost boost that we would get from our food. Now, um, this week in the first segment, what's in the news? Again, our numbers are eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. Again. Eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. You are listening to All Things Legal with your host Janine Lang, Attorney at Law. Now on to our first segment. What's in the news? So this week it was reported that Elephant Man returned from uh, uh, Brussels in Belgium. That's in Europe. And upon his arrival at the Sangsters International Airport, there are allegations that he made a false declaration to the um, immigration official with whom he dealt by failing to disclose all of the countries that he had visited within the last six weeks. 
I am not entirely sure if you would have seen um, the videos which were circulating on social media in the Jamaica Star and on the Gleaner where he issued um, first <laughs> a statement where he, he, he distanced himself from the allegations that he had said certain things to the immigration officer concerning their wearing of gloves and masks and their mortality. Um, I, I won't repeat those, those allegations, of course, because um, we're not entirely sure if they're true. And we are doing a program called All Things Legal, so we have to be very careful. But um, so O'Neill Bryan, which is um, Elephant Man's legal name, um, he you know, distanced himself from these allegations. And he said that, of course, he would take the coronavirus very seriously because it's a worldwide, um, you know, pandemic. And later, the, the, the Minister of Health and um, PICO <laughs> commented on the issue and stated, I mean, this week in the news in the Jamaica Observer, it was reported that Mr. Brian Elephant Man may be charged under the Public Health Act, um, as well as for making a false declaration to an immigration official. Even last night, if you were tuned in to the budget presentation of the um, Prime Minister, the Prime Minister um, called, he didn't name Elephant Man, what he called influencers who are not complying with the regulations and the measures which have been put in place by the Ministry of Health as weak fences. So is Elephant Man a weak fence? But what do you think, um, listeners? Do you think that um, Elephant Man should be charged? Do you think it was reckless of him? Because for completeness, what happened is that he, he, he did in fact go to Belgium, Brussels, Belgium, but he went, you know, he was on tour, so he went to a sleuth of other European countries as well, including Germany. And Germany is one of the countries which is currently on our list of banned countries you know um so mr brand would be required to um submit himself to the ministry of health and um he would undergo a mandatory um self-quarantine for at least 14 days um you know for them to determine whether or not he 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 was at risk so um in view of what is happening in the country and generally in terms of making false declarations um to our immigration officials um do you think that mr brian should be charged um you know um i, sh I should also add you know in 2017 tesha miller you know tesha miller was recently convicted for um the murder of that um, JUTC um, official. <laughs> He's reputed head of Klansman gang in Spanish Town. But in 2017, Tesha Milo um, was charged for making a false declaration to an immigration official. And at the time, you know, you know what the fine was, you know, or laws need to be updated. You know what Tesha Milo was fined? Take a guess, King. Take a guess. Oh, half a million. Oh, half a million. A dollar, you think? It wasn't a dollar, but it's pretty close. <laughs> he was he was fined 100 Jamaican dollars. Yes. <laughs> he was fined 100 Jamaican dollars. And um, yes, yes, because our laws are so outdated, 50 years old, that when... Right, exactly. But right, our laws are very, very, you know, um, old. So um, I'm seeing a comment coming in. Can I see that comment, um, Cassidy? So, um, you know, he he was he was fined um, a hundred dollars. And when the judge was handing down the sentence in 2017, the the parish uh, for the parish court of 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 um, Kingston and St Andrew, um, she 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 said to the persons in the court. 
just as how you were expressing mm -hmm. surprise that they find, the persons in court were very upset about it. And the judge turned to the court and said, when you leave court, go to your elected officials that you voted for mm -hmm. and have them amend the law to reflect current realities because $100, I can't even say it's a slap on the wrist. It's, it's really ridiculous. I'm seeing a, a listener here um, making a comment. In my view, he undermined the authority of the immigration officer and come apologize afterwards. Seems apologies become the norm. Mm, kissing my teeth. He makes me sick. Well, you know, those are the sentiments um, proliferating social media right now. You know, they, 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 they are of the view that, you know, um, O'Neill Bryan, otherwise known as um, Elephant Man, is a public figure. And he needs to show, you know, you know, right, more responsibility instead of being so reckless. So quite a number of persons were, um, were, were unified in the view that he should be charged. But they might be shocked to learn that the only thing that he would be required to do is to pay $100, which is nothing. What, what were you going to say, King? Well, well, he he is now. He um, subsequent reports said that he's currently in home quarantine because remember, you're in the government doesn't have extensive facilities to um, to quarantine everyone. So unless you're exhibiting these symptoms um, and you have been tested positive, I think there 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 are stages to it. So there's isolation, there's um, home quarantine, there's isolation, and there is um, the actual quarantine. You know, but he hasn't been tested. But um, the police have launched an investigation into the matter. So what's going to happen is that they're going to retrieve that immigration form that he filled out. I mean, for those of us who travel, we know that before the plane um, lands, the, the, the flight attendant comes to us, gives us an immigration form. And on that form, it says the countries that you have visited within the last um, six weeks. So he said that he actually verbally told the immigration officer that he went, he had been to Berlin, Germany. Um, but that's not enough. It has to be, um, you know, in writing, it has to be declared. No, he didn't. All he put on the form was Brussels um, in Belgium, which is not a banned country, it's a restricted country. So the view that um, persons were expe expressing um, is that the reason he did not declare that is because he did not want to face quarantine. What do you, can't hold him to what? No, right, but they have proof that he was actually in Germany. So, so that is where the false declaration comes in because it's an omission. What's the proof? Well, I believe certain persons, yeah, he was there to perform. And actually, I think his manager had actually indicated in certain interviews that he was even in Italy, which is now the epicenter of the virus. So, um, so those things would come to weigh against him, you know, if, if, if it, should, um, to, it should get to that stage. Yeah. Uh, wow, King, you're very defensive of Elephant Man. You know, I saw, <laughs> I saw, an, art, I saw an article, I told the, the, the star, you know, since this corona, you know, Jamaica, we are very entertaining people, you know, and the star, they, on their throwback Thursday yesterday, they, they posted a clip from Elephant Man's um, song. Signal the plane. <laughs> Signal the plane. Immigration. I call out my name. So people were saying, hmm, was that a prediction? You know, I'm sure that he does not. He doesn't find it as funny as we do. But we're making light of a very serious matter. You know, um, we, we really want to. This virus, you know, is projected to, to cost... Um, 25 million people their jobs if it continues like this and there has been sh a shutdown globally so we want to really stem the tide of this virus in this country it's a serious serious matter and most of the cases are imported cases so we really want to keep that to the minimum so that things can go back to normal so it's a very serious serious matter now speaking about the um the budget presentation of the prime minister, which was over four hours long. I, never, I didn't listen to all of it. I went and I, I, I downloaded it this morning. I listened to part of it, but um, 
all 88 pages of it this um <laughs> i read this morning um so there are certain as i mentioned before you know the coronavirus is going to have certain implications on all of us it has already started um you know i've been to the pharmacy even in port antonio been to the pharmacy in kingston went to a hardware store at the entrance of all of these businesses people are spraying your hands with alcohol with hand sanitizer you know um if you're going to a particular place and there are too many persons inside there's a line on the outside and they're waiting until you know the the the, the um the number of persons reduce inside because you know there is now a, a reduction in the persons who are entitled to gather in one place it has to be 20 or under you know so um it has really changed on a number of things and there are certain realities legal realities that we will have to contend with um during this coronavirus as well as after now in the budget presentation of the prime minister yesterday um a, a number of questions people have had concerns what will what will happen to my my mortgage payments what if this corona continues and i can't work and i can't pay my mortgage what is going to happen so the prime minister announced a number of measures which will take effect in the new fiscal year starting on the 1st of april one of these measures is that um there will be a reduction of um, 1% in interest rates for any new loans after April 1. If you have an existing loan with NHD, an existing mortgage with NHD um, listeners, then you will have a reduction of 0.5% in the interest rate, which is significant, you know. Um, and then... 0.5%, 0 which is half percent, right? Now, there is also a moratorium on payments of three months for those persons who would have lost their jobs as a result of coronavirus. So if your um, employer has no choice but to, to lay you off, to, 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 to um, downsize their operations as a result of coronavirus, then if you can show that, then you will get a moratorium of three months from the NHD to repay your mortgage. All right. And then um, you are also allowed, the prime minister in communications with NHD now allows delinquents to reschedule loan payments for six months once NHD has not started foreclosure proceedings. So if you're one of those delinquents where um, NHD has already listed your property <laughs> and um, they have started power of sale proceedings to sell, it doesn't apply to you. But once they have not, then you can reschedule um, your loan payments for six months. All right. So um, these are some significant benefits. Um, you know, um, for which which will come out of the um, issues concerning the corona. Another thing that you might want to know, and this will be fleshed out in the coming weeks because um, the details were not really disclosed in the presentation, uh, the budget presentation by the prime minister last night. But he did say that there would be temporary cash transfers to businesses based on the number of workers that they keep employed to assist businesses to keep afloat, right? And um, persons who lose their jobs as a result of corona will also be provided for under the supporting employers, um, supporting employees with the transfer of cash program, the SET program. Um, it, it appears that it is both private and, um, and, and public. Right. So they and they said that they will also provide for the poor and vulnerable through special grants. So the full details of these things will be um, will be will be um, disclosed shortly. And um, of course, um, as soon as we find out about it here on All Things Legal, we will share it with you again. Listeners, if you're just joining in, you are listening to all things legal on styles fm with your host janine lang attorney at law 
All right. Um, our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. Again, our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. I'm seeing another comment coming in from um, Fitzroy concerning the Elephant Man situation. And Fitzroy is saying, even though it's a fine of a penny, he should be arrested and charged, fined, and place the conviction on his record. So Fitzroy is saying it doesn't matter what the fine is, what the penalty is, he should face it. I, I imagine Fitzroy might be saying to make an example of him to, um, to act as a deterrent for other persons who are like-minded, who want to come into the country and not make um, a correct um, declaration to or immigration officials so um, so that's what um, Fitzroy is saying concerning that I think some persons though might be um, might not be pleased to know that all he will be required to to do is to pay a fine of a hundred dollars most of us can afford to pay a fine of a hundred dollars you know um, so so these are some of the the measures which were announced because, you know, um, financial analysts worldwide are projecting that after the coronavirus, the real crisis is coming. And the real crisis will be a financial recession such as was never seen by this world. All of the world will be sharing in this financial um, crisis and this financial recession. And of course, housing always features very highly when there is a crash, you know, um, so the issues of whether or not persons are able to service their mortgages, um, to lose their homes, you know, if you're not working, you know, um, there are certain issues because depending on the employment contract that you might have signed with your employer, it might, there might be cases where your employment contract provides that you're paid on an hourly basis or you're paid um, based on the amount of work that you perform. Now, if you can't work, if you can't work because of the coronavirus, then it is likely that you're not going to be paid for that. But even though corona is going on, you know, our expenses have not taken a break. <laughs> or, or, or expenses, unfortunately, have not been afflicted, similarly afflicted as some persons are by this virus. So our, our expenses and our bills will continue. And of course, you know, home bills are so critical. So these are some of the, um, the steps and the measures that the government has foreseen and put in place to stem some of the negative, um, you know, effects of the corona. You know, it's, it's similar to some of the measures that I've seen coming out of the United States. I believe um, that the president of the United States said that everybody's going to get a thousand U.S. dollars. I think Jamaicans would be very happy to hear that. But um, in, in our case, I mean, our country doesn't have as deep pockets as the United States of America. So... Um, on a needs basis and a case by case basis, you know the situation will be assessed to determine your need, and um, you know um, the disbursements will be made on that basis. You are listening to All Things Legal on Styles FM with your host Janine Lang, attorney at law. Our numbers are eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four. Three three eight seven nine seven three. That is eight seven six four five three one four four four, and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. If you're just joining us, we want to hear from you. Please um, send in your WhatsApp comments, questions, inquiries um, to All Things Legal with me, Janine Leng, Attorney at Law. Now. So we're seeing that, you know, the coronavirus is not just a health issue. It has, you know, legal ramification, legal ramifications, um, legal consequences, and it will affect contracts. You know, already we're seeing um, that Carnival, which was, a, 
was supposed to be what next month um king and it has now been postponed to um october and the i i saw some articles in the paper where it was said that those persons who would have purchased carnival costumes and paid for their bands then um they are not likely to get a refund if they're unable to make it in October, you know, and um, certain persons have commented on it. It might be subject to the law on frustration. Now, frustration, there is actually a, ter a legal term of art called frustration. And frustration happens where there are external circumstances due to the fault of neither of the parties that causes the contract not to be capable of being performed anymore. Nobody was able to anticipate or to foresee coronavirus. Um, and in those circumstances, the contract is, is treated as rescinded. In some cases, the, um, the person who is the purchaser of the services might be entitled to a refund. But for the carnival costumes, it's a little tricky because, you know, carnival costumes, they're, they're, they're tailored to size and, you know, shape and taste. You know, and the, 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 the vendor would have already expended res resources to... And I hear that some of these carnival costumes, it's, it's really not my thing at all, but um, the bacchanalia, it's really not my thing. But I hear that some of these um, costumes are actually very, very expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to, to jump in a band half naked. Right? It makes no sense to me, quite frankly. But um, that's just my personal view. Um, but whatever it is, persons would have entered into these contracts you know for um for carnival and they might have been frustrated the the vendor would have the carnival um band owners would have probably expended resources as well so if you're if those persons are unable to make it to the rescheduled date in um october then they might stand to lose the monies that they would have um invested in in in, in that contract so it has it has impact it will have an impact on on so many different sectors not just um on health i see a comment um coming in here um cassidy could i see that comment please okay if someone knows or suspects that he or she has or may have contracted the coronavirus and goes in a populated environment whether home or public can that person be charged if they infect others? Um, well, well, yes, because um, the 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 public health the government has actually now placed an onus on 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 all of us, right? Um, so once you feel that you have the coronavirus, you're supposed to make contact with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and um, they're, they come to you. They told they, they have indicated that we're not supposed to travel to the hospital. They will come to you and um, they will make a determination as to whether or not you're in the risk factor, whether you have interacted with somebody who has traveled to one of those um, con um, countries and um, whether you are exhibiting um, the symptoms of the corona. Right. Um, so. Based on the, especially, and we're going to look at it as the program progresses, um, based on the, um, the disaster management order, disaster risk management enforcement measures order 2020, um, there are certain restrictions which now apply to all of Jamaica in terms of steps that we are supposed to take. And there are penalties for failure to comply, right? Um, when we come back, we're going to be looking at the provisions in the Disaster Risk Management um, Enforcement Measures Order 2020, which was passed um, this month. I think it was March 17. Um, but in our final item in What's on the News, Jamaica issued um, a second community quarantine order concerning the community of Corn Peace Settlement in Clarendon. And this quarantine order was issued um, because the deceased, the first person who um, died from the coronavirus interacted with persons from this community and the family, the prime minister said, refused to cooperate with the authorities in terms of um, 
isolation and getting tested so um they have we're no we now have two communities in jamaica which are under quarantine the seven eight miles um, bull bay region as well as the corn peace settlement in clarendon and of course we know that once a community is under quarantine that the residents of that community are not allowed to nobody is allowed to enter nobody is allowed to exit you might have seen certain videos circulating um, on social media as well where persons have um, been complaining in terms of food supply um, that their food resources have been depleted so it's a very very serious matter it's a very very serious matter um, concerning this whole quarantine situation to be living under a shotgun um, pretty much while um, corona take its, its course throughout Jamaica. So we're, we're on our break. You're listening to All Things Legal on Styles FM with Janine Leng, attorney at law. When we come back, we will be discussing some of the provisions of the Disaster Risk Management Enforcement Measures Order, which was passed on March 16th. All right, soon come back. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Zane's Pharmacy is now open at shop number 8, Presa Plaza, Morant Bay. We're here to satisfy all your pharmaceutical needs and more. Currently, we do free blood pressure checks and blood sugar testing, as well as HIV testing and counseling. Zane's Pharmacy, open Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Sundays for your convenience from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Telephone 876-779-0006 or WhatsApp your prescriptions to 876-855-6291. That's Zane's Pharmacy, now open at shop number 8, Presa Plaza, Morant Bay. For the best quality in sound reinforcement and backlining, native audio, we have professional engineers with over 20 years of experience. So call us and we'll take care of your parties, wedding receptions, barbecues, conferences, and small stage shows. Crystal clear sound, native audio. Our prices are the best. Call us at 871-5212. That's 871-5212. Native audio. We make your events audible. 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 Don't miss the adrenaline rush with the musical ingenious digital tea. Saturdays, right here on Styles FM from 4 to 8 p.m. Remember the uprising artists and new music segment from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also, mix journal hour from 6 to 7 p.m. And the party hour from 7 to 8 p.m. Styles FM. Digital tea. Our brain. Uh-huh. God, it's Friday, the new day for real talk. So join Daddy Rude and Lady Cleo on a Friday night, 9 to 12, for real talk. The show where we discuss all that's real and nothing ideal. Only on Styles FM. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Planning a party, club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low price promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Styles FM for the most effective way to exploit your money.
marketing dollar. Architects, draftsmen and surveyors, get your drawings printed in high quality professional standards. We can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it VJ Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high quality white paper printing that is water resistant and never fades unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at 8 Eight nine three two two six six. Join your host Janine Lang on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM. Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we are back. You are listening to All Things Legal on Styles FM with Janine Lang, attorney at law. And we're talking about some of the legal measures which have been put in place since the incidence of coronavirus in Jamaica. Now, the Disaster Risk Management Act was passed in 2015, but since March 16, 2020, um, a new order was passed under this legislation, the Disaster Risk Management Enforcement Measures Order 2020. And this order was brought in force, brought to the fore, brought in force and force um, as a result of the coronavirus COVID-19. All right. Now, we know that on the 13th of March this year, the Prime Minister by order declared the whole of Jamaica to be a disaster area. It's very strong language, isn't it? It sounds so ominous. Um, so all, all of Jamaica is now considered to be a disaster area in view of COVID-19. And this, le this order, this legislation came into effect on the 18th of March, which is only just this Wednesday. All right. And I want to look, up some, look at some of the provisions of this um, order. Now, Section 3 of the order provided that any person who comes from a country where there is a local transmission of COVID-19 is required to proceed to that person's abode or place of residence and remain in self-quarantine for 14 days. And a place where there is local transmission, it's not um, limited to China, Iran, Italy, Germany, Spain, and those countries which are on the banned or restricted list. It also includes the United States because the United States has local transmission, which means that people underground in the United States are giving COVID-19 to each other. People are contracting it from each other. It's not just imported case cases. There are local transmission cases as well. All right. So if you're coming in from the United States, you have to go into um, a 14 day quarantine period. Now, I spoke to someone from the Ministry of Health, from their technical team, which is um, specially tasked to deal with some of the concerns and issues related to the COVID-19. And I was told that the Ministry of Health takes this 14-day quarantine very seriously. In fact, they have special officers from each country and they will have an unexpected visit, unplanned, unscheduled visit to your home. I was told that there was a man who came in from one of these countries and um, the officers went to his home and he was not there. He was at the beach, which, of course, it's understandable because the man never come to Jamaica for staying in a house and catch house color. But this is not normal times. This is COVID-19 times. Not true, Cassidy. So the man went to the beach, but the Minister of Health was not pleased. You know, he needed to be at home because he could have gone to the beach and passed on the virus to other persons, you know. So it is, it is very, very important that these persons take this provision very seriously as far as the self-quarantine for 14 days is concerned. And this place of abode also includes hotels. 
So you're not, if, if you were going to St. Anne, you plan, you booked to go into a hotel in St. Anne, you're not in, anyway, you're, you can't go outside. You understand? You can stay within the precincts of the hotel, but you cannot leave. All right? Um, but of course, say for instance, you know, you, you only came to Jamaica for a week. Um, you will be entitled to leave before the 14 days once you don't have the symptoms of the COVID-19. So say, for instance, you had booked a, a ticket for seven days. Seven days elapsed, you can go back to the United States or to Canada, but only if you are not showing symptoms. All right? <laughs> so if, and, and this goes back to the question that the listener had asked before, if during the period of self-quarantine a person develops symptoms of the COVID-19, they are required forthwith, which means immediately, to inform the minister responsibility for health and wellness. So you can't just keep it to yourself and say, boy, I'm going to drink some ginger and lime and, 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 um, and take some medication and some herb and some... Do them things there too, but you got to call the Ministry of Health. All right? Now, um, of course... If you are in Jamaica, you haven't traveled, but you are in Jamaica and um, you have come into contact with someone who traveled to a country, you know, affected by the COVID-19 or that person is infected with um, the COVID-19, you are required to inform the Minister of Health likewise immediately. All right. Now, since Wednesday... Um, the government has now placed an, a restriction under this same order of gatherings in public, which now should not exceed 20 persons at a time. I want to remind you listeners of our numbers. Our numbers are 876-453-1444 and 954- Three three eight seven nine seven three. You are listening to All Things Legal on Styles FM with me, Janine Lang, attorney at law. I want you to be writing in your questions and your comments. So once again, I'm giving you our numbers, 876-453-1444 and 954-338-7973. So for a seven-day period beginning on the 18th of March, 2020, no public gatherings, more than 20 persons. And it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. I find it to be very curious the way I see how this thing has, is being enforced. Because say, for instance, I've, I've been past, I pass a, a, a supermarket up the road and there's a line outside. But the line has 20 people or more in the line, Cassidy. So, but that's a gathering of 20 persons. I pass the bank and it's the same thing. So the bank is restricting how many persons can be inside, but the gathering is on the outside. So it's a catch-22 kind of situation. It's very, very difficult. You know, of course, this 20 persons does not include um, the Jamaica Constabular Force or the Jamaica... Um, Defense Force, soldiers or police, that's not included. It doesn't also include firefighting, civil aviation, telecommunications, water, electricity, people who are involved in those kinds of things, correctional services, right? Um, oh, um, and it also doesn't include tourist um, establishments and departments of government, etc. But I see here that it doesn't include um, banking businesses either. So I suppose the banks are entitled to, but tricky, <laughs> tricky, because it says it doesn't. I, I suppose it doesn't apply to the banking personnel, but not the persons who go inside the bank. So a bank might have more than 20 persons employed in it or, or present on site at any one time, but not necessarily um, the, the patrons, you know, public transportation. It doesn't include that. But one of the things that um, is included, though, is that in, in, in motor cars, like taxis, um, the access that if you are entitled to carry, um, you know, one person at the front and three in the back, you have to reduce it by one. 
So one at the front now and two at the back. Before we could have three at the back, one at the front. But now um, you have to reduce it by one. You know. No, it's taxi men don't want to hear that. And of course, it doesn't include sittings of the House of Parliament, meetings of cabinet or, or those kinds of committees. All right. Um, right. So no gatherings of 20 or more. Now, there's another provision um, in this order which says that um, the operator of um, hospitals have to ensure that um, or nursing homes or infirmaries shall ensure that no person visits a patient um, in this hospital infirmary or nursing home more than once per day. And that visitor should not have more than one visitor per day. So, you know, sometimes you have your family and you want to go in the morning because at the hospital, for example, you have like two visiting times in the morning and in the evening. You have to choose. And if you go in the morning, if you go once, you can't go again. And as a matter of fact, there's only one person who can visit one patient per day. Yes, that's what it says. Yes. So the patient can only have one visitor per day. Right, so these are some of the ways that it will uh it's affecting all of us listeners you are um you are you're tuned into styles f m and you're listening to all things legal with your host Janine Lang, attorney at law or numbers are eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four Three three eight seven nine seven three. What do you think about these measures? Do you think that they're effective? Do you think that they are too restrictive? You know, um, I like going to the gym, and I unfortunately, um, my gym is now closed because I mean, if there's a restriction of twenty persons, I mean, you know, it it really kind of defeats the whole purpose. Churches have are under the same restrictions as well, but they say that they can have gatherings, you know, but it just has to be 20 and less. So churches that have small congregations, yeah, churches with 20, but you have some small congregations, and sometimes those services are richer, you know, when you have just, it's like a family setting, so that's fine. You know, that's fine. You know, um, so... Another thing I saw, some of the, the, the vendors from the Coronation Market in Kingston, they were complaining about because um, they had closed down, I think, temporarily the um, Coronation Market. But under this new order, the act says that the order says that the market now shall operate only during the hours of 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. So they have closed, they have contracted the period um, um, reduce the period for which um, or, or, or um, markets can be open. Because, you know, as my grandmother used to say, food is the staff of life. So food is, is critical and it's, it's important. So they can't just totally close down um, the markets, but they have closed down um, the, they have reduced the, the amount of their operating hours. And the Ministry of Health has enjoined persons to obey the social distancing rule and the 20 um, person limit as well. Because, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to, well, even our market here in um, Port Antonio sometimes tends to have quite a number of persons there at any one time. But Coronation Market is a different story. I tell you, cock, you know, as they call it, curry, you know. So um, another. Um, provision of this order, this disaster risk management um, order 2020 says that all persons who can work from home should do so. You know, um, two persons contacted me this week. One person who is in the um, call center industry, the BPO um, industry, and they had some inquiries concerning this. Another person is in the auto services industry and they wanted to know how what this would look like but the truth of the matter is that in jamaica the model of our workplaces do not really tend itself so closely to um for persons to be to be working from home you know especially in certain industries face-to-face -face contact is is important you know um there are certain um you know, um, 
businesses in, in the United States, for example, where, you know, it concerns um, research or where technology is very advanced, where people can tune in remotely. But we don't really have that kind of model here. And I think it created a lot of um, confusion in persons' minds when the prime minister um, used the expression non-essential work because essential typically is associated with you know people in the medical um, industry as well as persons in the um, like you know police and soldiers and persons like that but he never meant essential services he said essential work for example i i i have a colleague who works at the tax administration jamaica and she sent me a copy of a circular which was um circulated by the commissioner general and what the tax administration jamaica did um for example is that they they placed their workers on a rotation right so you have 10 people working in a department, for example, and um, five persons work this week from the tax office, five persons work at home, and then they flip it the next day, or you understand, so that um, some persons, and it's really where they have to go and know and e e um, examine now whether or not these persons fall under, it, because there are certain things that you have to do at the, the tax administration in Jamaica. A worker can't take the delicate, sensitive files of tax administration Jamaica and put them on their personal PC, for example, and take home. You know, so it, so it depends. So you see what I'm saying? That essential work is not defined in that kind of way. Um, um, let me see that comment coming in, Cassidy. Okay. I listened to midday news today, which states that police, um, this is a listener making a, a comment here, listeners. I listened to midday news today, which states that police officers ordered a few corner shops in a community in St. Thomas to close their doors. A family member of mine in Port Antonio who owns a corner shop told me that the same was done to her. From my understanding of the PM's order, this is wrong practice. I don't know if the police officers misunderstood the PM. Can you please explain to us what was said by the PM in relation to same? No, it's so funny because the, the prime minister was very clear, you know, that supermarkets and um rest and supermarkets and shops they 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 do not they don't fall under they don't fall under the restriction right um so i i can't speak to those circumstances in terms of why the police officers would have um ordered that those places should have um been been closed it might have been because they had more than 20 persons patronizing the businesses at any one time but if it is that that was not the case then the the police would have been out of place based on the 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 act here to close down to close down these 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 um corner shops because there is absolutely no provision in the order which restricts the opening of these corner shops all right these corner shops during the seven day period starting from march 18th all right let's know so that really should not should not be the case at all now in relation to the working from home um, the act says that, you know, the employer shall have a duty if satisfied that the employee is able to discharge the duties of that employee from the employee's place of residence to grant the employee permission to do so without imposing any adverse consequences to the employee in respect thereof. Now, going back to the person who I had mentioned had made an inquiry from the BPO industry. There, there are regulations which the Prime Minister said in his pre budget presentation last night that they would be relaxing this requirement. But there is a requirement by law that call centers must have their equipment on site in the actual call center building. 
But what the Prime Minister was saying was that they're allowing the call center operators to have their call center equipment remotely to entitle employees to work from home. But, you know, um, listeners, some employers might not find this to be a very convenient arrangement for them if they have their expensive equipment. They don't want to give their expensive equipment. You understand what I'm saying, King? To, to give persons to be working from home. So it's a compromise, but it might not work out for everyone. You know, so a lot of persons had a misunderstanding of what this essential work is. It essential services and essential work is an entirely different thing. Yes, it's an entirely different thing. So if, if, if you can function, if your job entitles you to function from home, you know, to do research um, and things of that nature from home, then, then the, the, the order would, would, would apply to you. But um, most of our work requires to be physically on site, you know, so that would not apply to you at all. If you're just tuning in, as we're almost at the end of the program, you're listening to All Things Legal on Styles FM with Janine Lang, attorney at law. All right. Now, um... And the next thing, too, is that, you know, there has to be some kind of balance to this whole thing. Because, you know, a number of persons, <laughs> some persons were very happy when they heard this announcement because they viewed COVID-19 as a, as a vacation, you know, and it, it doesn't really work like that. You know, business has to continue um, so that our economy is not unnecessarily damaged after we have overcome this, 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 this situation. You know, um, so another provision is that if the employee works from home, this is not considered to be leave. It's not considered to be leave. So after you work, when you work from home and you go back to normal, your, your, your employer can't say, hey, but you know, you didn't get five days leave the other day. It doesn't, it, it's not considered to be leave because you're working from home, you know, um, now, Section 7 of this order also said that beginning the 18th of March 2020, all bars, nightclubs, and other places of amusement shall remain closed. Since, since Wednesday. Since Wednesday, all bars, nightclubs, and other places of amusement shall remain closed. You know, listen, I was kind of wondering, are you sure that Corner Shop is not a bar? The corner shop that you're referring to, because if they're selling, if they're selling groceries, is a different thing than if they're just selling liquor. Have some liquor well, right. Well, if it's a bar, if it is, if if it's dedicated to selling liquor or spirit, then it should not be open, right? Um. So places, bars, nightclubs, places of amusement should remain closed. For example, the Palace Amu Amusement Theatre in Kingston, both the one in um, Crossroads and the one in Ligony, are closed as of the 18th. Now, um, place of amusement was defined by the act to include cinema, dance hall, club, open air dance, amusement arcade, any place where a coin-operated amusement machine is open to the public, a festival, disco, roller, disco, skate rink, all of these things. Right, all of these places of, of amusement. And, of course, you know that some of these parties that require permits, the government said that they would not be issuing any permits during that period. Now, um, <laughs> well, no, radio stations do not apply. Do not or do not wouldn't fall under under this at all. But you know the, the bars situation. It's it's a very interesting thing, you know, because um, you know there was in the nineteen twenties and the nineteen thirties in the United States of America there was a period that was called the prohibition, and during the prohibition period it was thought by the United States government that alcohol, um. And the drinking of alcohol, the sale of alcohol, tended to, um, you know, um, crime and, um, um, and, 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 and certain, you know, activities that um, was depreciating the morality of the American society. So there was a time when you could not sell alcohol, no alcohol at all, no rum, no, no whiskey, you understand? You could, bears, all of those things were forbidden. Now, those things were forbidden, but 
there was a practice which developed in the United States and it was called moonshining. And moonshining is when, you, so what happened is that, you know, man love rum, you know. So the liquor trade was above ground and then it went underground. So it went now underground and people used to practice this thing called moonshining. So you see a man, even watch some movies like especially the Westerns, and you see a man walking with his whiskey and it's in a brown paper bag. And the sheriff of the town might stop him or whatever to find out what is that in that brown paper bag because he's not supposed to be drinking alcohol. He's not supposed to be buying alcohol, you know, or the, the bar owner is not supposed It's almost like we have a 2020 version of moonshining in Jamaica because I can tell you that last night when I was coming in from Kingston, there were lots of moonshiners. <laughs> there were lots of moonshiners, especially in our country areas. I saw... There were some bars that I noticed that were closed, but there were certainly quite a number of bars which remained open. And especially in the recesses of the heart of the country, where, you know, enforcement might be a little difficult. Police now have no time for go up in a country go check. You know that you know that bars are one of the most popular spots in this country. You know, so the bars unfortunately um are still open. So uh, apparently some of our Jamaicans are drinking off, drinking the corona off their chest. But, you know, you should stop drinking alcohol. That's one of the things that we never mentioned last week. That al- Stop. Stop drinking alcohol. Even, even without this ban. And the ban is not on alcohol, really. The ban is really on, on bars. But truth be told, you know, um, the, the, the alcohol, it, um, it actually reduces the capacity of your immune system, right? So you should cut back on the alcohol. Doctors are uniform in, in the fact that you should be really cutting back on your, 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 the alcohol, your alcohol intake, right? And of course, those of us especially who have an alcohol problem, we really want to be in the best of health so that we can fight off this coronavirus. Another thing, of course, that goes without saying that we should be avoiding is smoking, you know, because smoking, you need your lungs. The corona is a respiratory um, virus, is a respiratory condition. So you want your 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 lungs to be to be operating optimally, you know, and smoking reduces their ability to do so. Right. So um, while we might be having this moonshining um, experience in Jamaica, um, we, we really want to just comply with the regulations um, of the company. Now we're at the end of the program. It's five o'clock. It was my pleasure to. Your taxes hold the key. The income tax filing deadline has been extended to Wednesday, March 25, 2020. It was my pleasure. Self employed um, persons, companies, partnerships, today. and employed persons. Um, thank you for joining All Things Legal. All things being equal, join me next week for All Things Legal. Take care. Bye bye. Cassidy, what did you just do to me? Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you think you've been exposed to COVID-19, stay home. Self-isolate immediately and call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. your host Janine Lang on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at every-